so before going for normalization okay first of all normalization means um, you know most of it involves uh, decomposing a table which means if you have a big table we generally try to divide into small tables right and whenever we do such uh, you know decomposition we should see some properties one property is whenever you decompose a table into many tables then we later would like to ask some questions which are based on all the small tables then we might try to combine them so when we decompose a table and again when we combine the tables into the original table the number of tuples or the data that should not get altered which means there is no way you lose the data but then you might sometimes get extra data right so which i'll just show you that with, the, with this example let us say we have this table and then we decided that we want to divide it into you know small tables uh, right so whenever you divide into small tables it is generally uh, if you don't have any common attributes in the tables it will be difficult for you to combine it later for example if you just split it out this way you know if you have taken it into two tables one is containing just a and other is containing bc right then later if you have to combine them it will be really a big problem see this if you try to do like this then what happens is a will get a will have only two values a1 a2 and b and c will have you know three combinations i think b1 c1 and s b2 c2 these two combinations and later when you try to combine them you know you try to take a cross product isn't it which means uh, again if you try to merge them into the table a b c then what happens is you have to combine this with both of these right which means you will get a1 b1 c1 right and again a1 b1 a2 a1 b2 c2 right so actually this uh, a1 b2 c2 is not at all there yeah it is there let's see one more now then uh, again you get a2 b1 c1 right so a2 b1 c1 is there and again you get a1 a2 b2 c2 and a2 b2 c2 is not there isn't it see one more is a2 b1 c1 and other is a2 b2 c2 right so by looking at this we got one more new tuple added right so just to avoid this whenever we split a table into two or more tables we see that among these tables at least some attributes are common one or more attribute is common so that it will be easy for us to combine later and then what attribute should be common and we should not take any attribute randomly i'll just show you what happens if we take any attribute randomly assume that we are trying to divide it into two tables like this okay so i want to divide into two tables one table contains a b and other table contains a c which means i am having as common attribute you know uh, a a as the common attribute now what does the table containing a b will contain see this the, which means if the table is split up, split up this way then the table containing a b will contain a1 b1 a2 b1 a1 b2 isn't it a1 b1 a2 b1 and then uh, you know a1 b2 and the table containing ac will contain a1 c1 a2 c1 and a1 c2 right now when i try to combine them so again later because of uh, you know some information if i want some information then i try to combine it why do i combine it is sometimes we would like to ask some questions about it you know given the value of a if i ask about c then we might have to combine it and then get the value because here the there is no relationship between a and c the only relationship is from here you have to go there and you have to get it right in that cases we combine it now we combine them using the common attributes so uh, common attribute is a so wherever a is having a1 we combine these two right and again a is having a1 here right so this one is going to be combined with this as well as this so what do we get a b c we get this this one is going to be combined with this as well as this so for this let's combine these two first because a1 is common right now a1 and b1 and c1 right and now let's combine these two because a1 is common then what do we get a1 b1 and c2 right 
now let's see if this information is present there a1 b1 c1 is there but a1 b1 c2 is not there isn't it this information is completely not there this is extra added right let's see let's complete it now what about a2 a2 is combined only with this one right so what do we get a2 b1 c1 and again here a1 right and let's combine these two a1 b2 c1 and let's combine these two a1 b2 c2 right so if you watch it we got uh, two more extra tuples so one extra tuple is this and what is the other extra tuple a1 b2 c2 is fine and a1 b2 c1 this one is also an extra tuple right so these two are extra tuples we don't have uh, these two values there all right so this is the problem whenever you divide the table like this we might we might see that you know sometimes extra tuples get added right it is called as lossy decomposition lossy actually data is not lost we gained the data but still it is a loss isn't it we have got some extra information which is not true that is a loss so this type this type of decomposition decomposition is called as lossy decomposition if you want to see one more decomposition let us say uh, I, I want to show you that every possible decomposition is not lossy right so we might decompose the table into two ways this way instead of having a b and a c maybe i'll have a b and b c let's see what happens with this if i see a b what are the various combinations for a b one combination is a 1 b 1 another combination is a 2 b 1 another combination is a 1 b 2 right and what are the various combinations for b c one combination is b 1 c 1 another combination is b 2 c 2 now i want to combine them so these two can be merged and this one can be merged this way right then what do we get when i combine these two into into the table containing all these three so one tuple i get is a1 b1 c1 because of these two and then a2 b1 c1 and then a1 b2 c2 right check this we got the actual table there is no data loss which means no extra tuples are added so one thing is whenever extra tuples are added we call it data loss okay just don't get confused we didn't lose any data we gained it but still it is wrong okay so what i mean to say is every decomposition is not going to be a lossy decomposition so some of the decompositions are going to be lossy so what we want is we want lossless decomposition so you know it turns out that lossless decomposition is possible whenever we split the table into two parts and the common attribute if that common attribute is either a candidate key or some key attribute is key in one of the tables then we can say that the decomposition is not lossy which means see this we decompose the table into two parts isn't it now what is the common attribute b if the common attribute is a key in one of the tables then the decomposition will not be lossy right here it so happened that b is a key in here which means b values are not getting repeated even though b is repeating here right that is why you know if it is at least uh, you know key in one of the tables then the decomposition will not be lossy that is why this is not lossy and here if you watch it a is a key either in this or this right a is repeating here as well as here right therefore whenever you decompose it see that the common attribute in the decomposition is going to act as a key so what do i mean is if you are going to dec you know decompose a big relation r into two smaller relations r1 and r2 right whatever you take r1 intersection r2 it is the common right it should either be able to determine r1 right or r1 intersection r2 it should either be able to determine r2 right which means the common attribute has to be either a key here or a key here right then the decomposition is not going to be lossy right sometimes you know one other way of writing that it is keys you can even write it as r1 minus r2 okay which means uh, r1 minus r2 means uh, it will not contain r1 intersection r2 one other way of writing it either you write r r1 leave it there 
or you write like like this it doesn't make any difference okay because in some questions you might see like this and you might get confused that is why i'm writing it so it is also saying that you know r1 intersection r2 is going to determine every attribute in r1 except that common part anyway that common part is already included isn't it r1 intersection r2 contains that common part right so either you write like this or you write like this it is also fine so anyway both of these say that the common attribute has to be a key in one of the tables that is the meaning of it so from now on we are going to see decompositions you know whenever we divide the table see that the common attribute is going to be a key in one of them right okay hi if you are planning to do masters then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in india i'll give you all the reasons so first reason is out of 1 lakh students who take gate every year there are only 500 seats in old iits so all the iits put together have a acceptance rate of 0.5% and iit is universities better than iit is they have very good acceptance rate like 30% 40% but all the iit is put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5% and if you are working hard to get into iit bombay iit bombay is ranking is 177 and iit roorkee is ranking is 400 if you are happy to get into iit roorkee then getting into universities better than iit roorkee is easier compared to getting into iit roorkee and looking at the salaries for computer science of uh, for software jobs if you have done your masters in computer science in us the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year so even if you take an average of 1 crore per year your savings will be much higher than the salaries in india after taxes and your cost of living you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year and in india the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs so your savings will be much greater than the salaries in india and these are all the services that we provide university shortlisting so depending on your profile we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply and statement of purpose building and then lor guidance and gre and english test assistance and education loan assistance so you don't have to have any collateral which which means without any security now you can get education loan getting education loan is very simple these days and whatever the amount fee the amount of uh, fee that you have you have a range of uh, universities you can apply for 10 lakh universities 20 lakh universities or 50 lakh universities but whatever it is you are going to get complete education loan and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you getting it after you get a job and then we do visa assistance mock visa interviews and then connecting with the university alumni so now you might ask why we should join game of visas so the answer is we have 90% success rate 99% success rate and these are all the destinations that we guide the students to so we guide students to any country that you want to go so now it is not just usa we guide to uk germany australia Canada. So we guide we guide students to all the countries. We work with all the destinations. And if you are interested in going abroad, you have to just drop us a message on this WhatsApp number nine four nine four triple five four five four. Okay. Thank you.